One of the things that I've been thinking about today is this tweet from Dr. Nicole LaPera, who you may know as the holistic psychologist on social media. The tweet says, in a society where people aren't allowed to grieve, where we expect humans to be machines and to always just keep going, it's no surprise that the amount of rage in our world, road rage, people attacking complete strangers, long-term unreleased grief becomes rage. I totally agree with this. I think that unprocessed trauma and unprocessed grief can become anger and can lead to violence. And I think there are so many systemic barriers to processing grief, namely that because capitalism aims to take every moment of every day and exploit for profit, your body, your time, everything about your consciousness, your attention economy, essentially, we are encouraged to take the time to rest. Rest, I believe, is a fundamental tool to both reflect on and understand what's happening in your life. A book that might serve as a really instructional guide for you is called Rest is Resistance, a Manifesto by Trisha Hersey. You may know Trisha Hersey as the founder of the NAP Ministry on social media. She's a really wonderful writer. And I find that this book sort of serves as both a meditation and also an encouragement for us to take time away from our capitalist schedules to really rest as a as a mode of resistance against the forces that would seek to basically colonize us in our attention spans. Another wonderful writer that you might consider reading is Maisha T. Hill, whose book Heal Your Way Forward, The Co-Conspirator's Guide to an Anti-Racist Future, is a really wonderful look at mental health, social movements, our complicity and structures that harm, and also how we can begin to untangle our relationships to these systems. Maisha is a fabulous writer, author, speaker, and entrepreneur, and you should definitely follow her on social media because she posts such insightful stuff. I hope that while you're listening to this video, you'll just take some time to consider the things that you haven't allowed yourself to grieve in your own life. A writer that I admire, Ryan Holiday, says that the obstacle is the way. And I think so often the liberation from pain is allowing ourselves to move through the experience of actually feeling it. When my grandmother died, my world was completely shattered. She was the woman who raised me, who taught me how to read, and she was my North Star in life. I have a writer friend named Mary Eliza Hartong. You should definitely check out her work. She's great. But when I ran into her on Dartmouth's campus after my grandmother died, she said, so many people are going to encourage you to distract yourself or take your minds off things. And I want to encourage you to let yourself feel every moment of the pain, because the only way out of it is through. It's some of the best advice I've ever heard, and I really think that allowing yourself to grieve is the ultimate answer to processing so much of life's pain. I love you, and I hope you're well.